Good morning and welcome to Inside Texas Politics. The Senate is the focus of most activity in the Texas legislature right now. The bathroom bill among the first non-emergency items the Senate will consider this week. Property taxes is up Tuesday as well and closing a long overdue loophole on bad teachers. Senator Van Taylor, a Collin County Republican, is in studio with us this morning and joining the questioning as always is Bud Kennedy of the Star-Telegram. Thanks for being here, guys. Great to be with you, Senator. Morning, Jason. Uh, Senator, let's start with the bathroom bill. It goes to the floor this week. You support it. Are there any Republican holdouts? Well, I think we're, we certainly had the votes to suspend, and I think we're going to have the votes to pass it. Uh, you know, we've gotten a tremendous um, you know, outcry from parents uh, across across my Senate district, Senate District 8, you know, saying that they don't want to have uh, their children forced to go uh, into the locker room and take a shower next to someone of the opposite gender. Democratic Senator Sylvia Garcia from Houston in the committee hearing last week, she raised an interesting point. She said if the intent is to stop sexual predators from going to women's restrooms, why not just forbid them from using the opposite sex? restroom as opposed to putting the term biological sex in there. What do you think about that? Well, I, I think, you know, stepping back for a second, I mean, the first, first question is, you know, should this be uh, a discussion that's at the state level? And, you know, General Sessions, when he uh, repealed, uh, you know, the Trump administration repealed this uh, this debate. Obama, Title nine, yeah. Obama has forced this discussion into this country. Uh, and we're watching the discussion, not only did it come from up top, but also come we're watching different school districts and different cities have this discussion. And so the question is, you know, are we going to have this debate in 1,200 school districts and 1,300 cities and 254 counties and 350 charter schools of state? Or are we going to have it one time at the state legislature. And I think it's incumbent on us as state legislators to give an answer that is a state answer uh, for every for, for the entire state. But as far as specific language though, I mean, sure. the, the president's already rescinded that Title IX uh, change that President right. Obama made too. As far as specific language in, in the bill though, um, is biological sex necessary if, if the purpose is to keep sexual predators out of the opposite sex's restroom? Well, again, this is about common sense, common decency, privacy. Uh, you know, we, we should make accommodations. Um, that's, that's actually something that we're, that's important to all of us. But at the same time, that doesn't mean forcing people into a very uncomfortable situation and something that, that they don't want to be in. Uh, and it's about, you know, making sure that we have a policy across this state that is a common sense, logical policy that everybody, uh, common sense, logical policy that almost everybody agrees on. I mean, there, there's broad support across the state. There are certainly naysayers. And, and I think sometimes we do some things, there are naysayers. And that's what's really driving the conversation. But I think it's time for the majority to step up and say, look, we would like to organize it like this. And I think that Senate Bill 7 is a logical way to go ahead and do that. And why does this have to be a statewide bill? You know, uh, principals, sure. administrators have been dealing with this in schools for 20, 30 years without sure. any hubbub at all. Right. Why, why does the Texas legislature have to right. make a hubbub? Well, I think you can see that, that in the places where this discussion has happened, whether it's in Houston and Fort Worth ISD and Dripping, Dripping Springs ISD, you're watching independent school districts, you're watching cities grappling with this, dealing with lawsuits, having people coming from Washington, D.C., raising money off it, creating a tremendous circus uh, that, that, honestly, school boards should be focused on educating children. They shouldn't be fo forced to grapple with this problem. Uh, and so that's what we're trying to do in the Texas legislature, give an answer, a policy that is a statewide policy so that you don't watch, you know, cities, school districts, counties have to grapple with this. And again, you're going to hear that debate a thousand times, thousands of times, or you're going to have it one time. And the legislature is engineered and wired to do this. Uh, and, I, and I will point out that, you know, Democrats and Republicans have filed bills about this in the legislature. So there are certainly the one consensus that both sides can agree on, or some of the members of both sides, is that the legislature is the right place to have this discussion. And something that goes on in schools and locker rooms often is teachers preying on students and sending, you know, text messages. You, you have some bills sure. that help punish teachers and even take away the pensions of teachers who prey on right. students through sexual messages. Sure. No, uh, you know, when, when I found out about this, I mean, the next morning my staff got to work on dealing with what we're calling passing the trash, which is uh, a shocking secret in, in our school systems in Texas is that some school, not all, but some uh, are allowing sexual predators who are teachers uh, to to go on to the next school district. They're quietly firing them and let them keep doing that. Uh, we worked very hard on this. We have a very, very substantial bill that, pa that passed the Senate last week. Uh, Senator Paul Bettencourt from Houston was the author. I was very proud to, to join author on that with him and also to add several add amendments, uh, specifically taking away pensions from teachers who molest children uh, while they're, you know, they should not be rewarded by the taxpayer after they molest a child. And, and taking away the, the the state's part of that pension, you can't take Correct. away what, what the right. teacher paid in there, right? Right. So we're we're taking away. You know, a pension is a reward. Right. You did a good job. We're proud of you. Thank you for playing. And look, right. we, we've got some great teachers in this state. Clearly. I'm a huge fan of teachers. A big advocate for them, uh, for their pay, for their retirement. We we need to have teachers. That is the that is the core of, of, of a great education system. But when there's a bad actor, they should not be rewarded by the taxpayer. And, and, and pa passing the trash. 
what, what you're both discussing is something that Charlotte Huffman, one of our investigative Absolutely. reporters, has done a lot of stories on, too. It, the Senate bill's a strong one, and it holds principals and superintendents crim criminally responsible yep. if they don't report um, any inappropriate relationships. Do you expect any substantive changes when this goes to the House? Well, I, backing up, I want to I want to give plaudits to, to to Charlotte. She did a great yeah. job. Your your station WA did a great job on this. I mean, you guys broke the story on on teachers uh, receiving a pension in jail, and that really you know that really exposed the light on a really horrible practice and something that's very shocking to Texans that their tax dollars are rewarding child molesters in jail. Um, and you know, I'm I'm going to be working on. I, I think that the House will improve and improve and strengthen this bill. Uh, I think that I think it can only go up. And I, and I'm proud to say that every single member of the Texas Senate signed on to this bill. All 31 members. If someone says what's good for the goose, there's also a bill to take away the pensions of lawmakers convicted right. of felonies. Yeah, and, I, and so I authored. You know, the first bill off the floor of the Senate, as you're aware, is the governor's ethics package. I was right. very proud to author the governor's ethics package. Uh, and we revoke pensions for corrupt politicians, and we use the same language and the same structure. If we're going to take it away from politicians, we're going to take it away from school teachers that bless children. And you said that you'll decide after the session whether to run for Congress to replace retiring sure. uh, Congressman Sam Johnson. You're here. We have to ask you, does it look any more appealing to you now, <laughs> Senator? Well, we're look, I've had a great session, you know, passing the governor's uh, ethics package off the Senate floor, very first bill passed off. You know, you got a great win uh, last week with getting uh, revoking pensions uh, from teachers that molest children. Yeah. Uh, so things are things are going incredibly well. But and that is my immediate focus is, is doing a great job for the Republican for the people that voted for me in Collin County. Uh, they deserve a great senator, and that's what I'm totally focused on. That's, that's my immediate concern. Final why, order. Why would you rather be in Congress? Say you're one of 31 <laughs> in the Texas Senate. Well, again, my focus right now is serving the people of Collin County and Senate District 8. Senator Van Taylor, thanks for coming in. It's good to see you. Sure, great to be here.